As we bring this year to a close with our final episode of the year, we've seen two orbital flight test attempts and a wide array of upgrades and repairs here at the production facility. And as exciting as it's been, we're looking forward to an even more spectacular new year here at Starbase. Now let's dig in. Concrete placement for the Star Factory expansion at the build site continues, and more concrete was placed for the next phase of the construction on Friday. While foundations are being poured for upcoming areas, steel work continues on the current section. Exterior cladding installation continues on the first phase of the Star Factory nose cone assembly hall, and once all the cladding is installed, the exterior section of the factory will be complete. A cryo storage tank from the dismantled air separation plant departed from the Sanchez site at Starbase, heading for parts unknown. Following Booster 10's tumultuous and aborted static fire test, the booster transport stand was relocated from its parking space at the launch site to the orbital launch mount, just in case the booster needed to be taken off the OLM. The orbital launch mount work platform was brought back to the launch site as well, giving workers access to the underside of the launch table and booster. Early on Saturday morning, the booster transport stand was moved away from the launch mount and sent back to its parking spot near the D2 gate. A new sign bearing SpaceX's logo arrived at the launch site to be mounted on the beam above the D1 gate. Making use of a boom lift and telehandler, the contractors went straight to work installing the new signage, starting with the letter S. P, C, and E went in next, as workers focused on getting the more regular shapes in place. The A and X were last, and the sign was fully assembled in about six hours. After a few hours of wiring work, the new sign was turned on for the first time before shutting off for the night. Production equipment continues to be installed inside the Star Factory nose cone assembly hall. On Tuesday, one of the two likely flap support jigs was spotted next to the nose cone welding station. Back at the launch site, the chopsticks were taken out of the launch position for lowering. The ship quick disconnect arm was moved out of the way and the chopsticks were brought down to the hard stop at the base of the launch integration tower. Workers erected scaffolding at the base of Booster 10's liquid oxygen tank hatch, allowing workers to enter the tank for potential inspections, maintenance, or repairs. Several more truckloads of prefabricated steel sections and beams for the Star Factory expansion were delivered to the build site on Wednesday. Around the same time, a large base column was lifted and installed as the steel work continued. The upper section of the column followed suit an hour later, guided into place by iron workers to bring the new section of the assembly hall to its full height. Early Thursday saw the arrival of the booster thrust simulator as crews prepared to bring the next booster over to Massey's for cryogenic testing. Later that morning, the two-point ship lifting jig was relocated at the build site heading down Remedios Avenue. We also saw a new Star Factory roof beam being lifted into place. These large roof spanning beams are being installed across each column row as they're put in, followed by the roof purlins. A new cryo tank was delivered to the launch site as work continues to build out the replacement propellant storage system. After being driven into the launch complex, the new tank was moved into position, filling the gap between the other recently delivered storage tanks. Back at the ring yard, the booster thrust simulator and transport stand was moved into Mega Bay 1. A little over four hours later, booster 12 was lifted onto the thrust simulator stand for transport and testing at Massey's. Over at Port Canaveral, after having launched Starlink 6-34 and completed stowage operations at the docks, Falcon 9 booster 1081 was laid onto the horizontal transporter on Saturday. Starlink Group 6-32 lifted off late that night, lofting 23 more V2 mini Starlink satellites into orbit on what would turn out to be Booster 1058's final flight. On Sunday, SpaceX support ship Bob returned to Port Canaveral with four fairing halves from the Starlink G6-32 and G6-34 missions. Signet Warhorse towed a short fall of Gravitas out to sea in support of the Starlink G6-36 mission, scheduled to launch on Friday the 29th. 
tug Kurt J. Crosby returned to Port Canaveral on Tuesday, towing just read the instructions into port with the remains of Booster 1058 on deck. After the Octagrabber was unable to get a good grip on the tilted booster, the ships ran into stormy weather off the coast of Florida. High seas and strong winds ultimately toppled the booster, rupturing the tanks and leaving the upper half of the rocket in the sea. Recovery ship Shannon returned to port with Cargo Dragon C-211, having successfully splashed down on December 22nd to the end of the CRS-29 mission. Salvage operations for Booster 1058 began on Wednesday, starting with the removal of the rocket's landing legs. Support ship Bob headed out to sea once more to join a short fall of Gravitas in support of the Starlink Group 6-36 mission. With three of the four legs removed and the remains of the hull wrapped in load straps, Booster 1058-19 was offloaded from Just Read the Instructions. On the thrust of 27 Merlin engines, Falcon Heavy launched into the Florida skies for the USS F-52 mission, carrying the secretive X-37B space plane into its highest orbit yet. The mission had been delayed for several weeks before finally launching on Thursday. Following their successful liftoff, the Falcon Heavy side boosters returned to LZ-1 and LZ-2. Less than three hours later, Falcon 9 Booster 1069 lifted off from Slick 40 with the Starlink Group 6-36 mission, marking SpaceX's 96th and final Falcon launch of 2023. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. We want to wish a happy and prosperous new year to everyone watching around the world. We'll see you next year, and thanks for watching. Lab Padre, out.